All right, it's time for another quick tech. Last night I was working on the setup of my project base. Still haven't got a name for it yet. I've just been calling it Blackie. And I noticed that the neck needs a shim. And that's just par for the course for parts, instruments, parts, casters and stuff. It's something you'll come across all the time when you start putting together your own instruments out of parts. So I've been sorting out the shim in the neck pocket, but before I put the neck back in, there's a couple of things I've done. The first thing, well, I did it last night actually. I put a drop of water thin CA into each of these screw holes and I've actually just pushed that down and kind of mooched it around with a, a little bit of bamboo skewer or whatever. You could probably use a toothpick. And I've actually left that overnight to soak into the threads that were created the first time I bolted the neck up, just to soak into those threads and strengthen those threads. And well, I like to think it also kind of spreads the load of the screw when it's tugging on those threads when the, the neck is in place and the screws are torqued up, spreads that load a little bit further into the wood fibers that surround the holes. Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. You might not think that's really necessary because there's you know thousands and thousands of Fender guitars that just have wood screws straight into the maple necks. And you're kind of right, but in this situation, I think it's really important. It, it's not a bad idea to do that anyway, but in this situation, I think it's important. And that's because with this neck, I'm not sure if you can see, the truss rod adjustments in the heel. And the body doesn't have a little route. I guess I could have routed a recess for an Allen key, uh, but I just couldn't be bothered, to be honest. I don't really mind removing the neck to adjust the truss rod. My old 70s Fender P is like that, and it's not that big a deal. Normally what you do is just remove the front two screws completely and then slacken the rear ones by maybe a quarter inch, and that way you can tilt the neck enough to get your adjuster in there make your adjustment and then put the neck back down. But of course, every time you return a screw into the same hole, you run the risk of that screw not actually following the original thread, but cutting its new thread on top of the old one. And of course, if you do that more than once or twice, then you've basically chewed out these screws. And it's a really common problem with vintage fenders that that has happened. In fact, this isn't from my P-Base, this is another neck that I have kicking around, this is from the 70s, and that's exactly what's happened on this hole here. I can just push my screw straight in there, there's no threads left at all, and it's kind of on its way to happening with this one. And since these are the two screws that Tex will remove completely when they adjust the truss rod, it's much more likely to happen on the front two screws than the rearward screws, but it does happen on these as well. So. By gluing those threads and, and kind of reinforcing the threads with that glue, it's much less likely to happen. And what you'll find is when the screw goes back in, especially if you start it by hand with, a, with an actual screwdriver as opposed to a drill driver, it's much more likely that the screw will just find that original thread and follow it. And it's much less likely that it will chew the hole out. The other thing I do with that in mind is I actually lubricate these threads ever so slightly with a tiny amount of lanolin grease, and I'm just doing that right now. Um, literally a tiny dab, and then I'll just mooch that right into those lower threads. That way when I install this, it's actually gonna smear a little uh, grease into those threads, and it doesn't hurt to actually put it in partially first by hand so that you can get the grease in there. And again, by lubricating the threads, it's, uh, it's, again, even less likely to cut a new thread, and it's much more likely. In fact, it's almost always going to follow the old thread and you won't have the issue chewing them out. A lot of guitar builders I've seen, especially in social media, um, I've seen a lot of them actually put threaded inserts into neck heels, and it's not a bad idea. In fact, I used to work for a guitar manufacturer that did something similar. But that was mostly because they had a very small footprint on their neck heels because the guitars were reissues of instruments that were designed back in the 50s and 60s and they really didn't want to change that design so it was one way they got around it. Really if you do this and the screw's going across the grain as it does with fender style bolt-ons then you really shouldn't have any problems with proper wood screws. 
Acoustic guitar bolt-ons, well, they're a different story because of course the screw's going into end grain. It's going to the tall part of the neck heel into end grain and inserts are actually a nice idea for those and it's very common for bolt-on acoustics. The other thing you might have noticed is that I've actually used lanolin grease. The nice thing about lanolin grease is that it also protects these threads from rust. And this timber is Sapirli, and to be honest, this neck is just about all of the experience I've ever had with Sapirli, but it does seem to be a lot like mahogany. It's a brown timber. And what I've noticed over the years is that screws going into brown timbers like mahogany, uh, they just seem much more likely to rust over time. You certainly get rusty screws in old fenders, you know, with maple, alder, ash, uh, poplar, you know, the old stingrays, I think use poplar. In blonde timbers, you still get rusted screws, of course, but it just seems more common that you get rusted frozen screws in mahogany, Gibsons, for example. I'm not entirely sure, but I assume that has to do with the tannins in the timber. Brown timbers, I think, in general, are more tannic. Again, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if I'm off the mark there, but that's kind of my gut instinct. I haven't really done any research on that. And of course, tannins are acidic, tannic acid. And I assume that's why plated steel screws tend to rust more frequently in here. So by using lanolin grease, I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone. For machine head screws, I normally use two gauge, half inch stainless steel screws. Again, if you work on a lot of old guitars, Stripping out and, and breaking machine head screws is actually pretty common. So using stainless steel screws is a bit it's kind of future proofing the new machine head installations. So there you go. Go ahead and reinforce the threads of your neck heel screws with some thin, thin CA. I don't use accelerant. Like I say, I let it soak in and just leave it at least for a few hours before I put the screws in. In this case, it was overnight because it was towards the end of the day but um, it works really well and you shouldn't need to have to use threaded inserts or any of that sort of stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, hit the bell. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.